good everybody, it's Reed and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going over one of my favorite controls. We're going to be learning the convincer control. Now the convincer control is something that's really strong and not too difficult to do. There are some more challenging variations, but today we're going to go over the basic variation that is still one of the strongest controls that I know. Again, controlling a card just means having a card placed in the deck somewhere but actually moving that to secretly to a different location. So in this case, the card will appear to go in the middle and actually end up on the bottom. This is a control that I used to use all the time and is one that I could see someone using in their repertoire um, very often because it's very, very strong, very convincing, and there's nothing weird about it. It's very normal. Um, these days I have some other uh, controls that I prefer a little bit more and uh, Alex Pandrea's uh, take on the DMB spread control it is a similar uh, control to this and I just prefer it a bit better It's a little bit more challenging um, But it's definitely a little bit more fair. So I use that instead of this one uh, Today, but regardless this control is still one of my favorite controls of all so without any further ado Let's jump right into the video in terms of a demonstration. I'm going to quickly run through the convincer control It's gonna be pretty quick because it's just a fairly quick control, and here's what it looks like. So you spread through the cards, have the spectator choose one. Let's say they choose this one right here. All right, you show them the seven of diamonds, and then we'll take the seven of diamonds, we'll out jog it a little bit, and then I'll place it into the middle, and it's already been controlled to the bottom. So in terms of the exposure, the convincer control is very invisible from the top and all other angles, but it's easily exposed from the bottom. So I'll show you exactly what's going on. Spread the deck, you have them select a card, all right? You show that card, the Jack of Diamonds, all right? You begin to pull it out. And you close the deck and push their card into the middle when it's already on the bottom. All right, so time for the breakdown. The convincer control is really not that difficult to do, but there's one part of it that is a little bit, let's say, fishy, let's call it fishy, that you got to learn how to uh, hide and not draw attention to in order to make the force convincing. So the main mechanics aren't too difficult. Let's jump into those. Basically, we're just going to be spreading the deck like normal. Nothing fishy at first, okay? Uh, you don't want to spread the deck in a round or a curve. You want to spread it uh, straight for this, okay? So keep it as square and as straight as you can. You see how I'm spreading that straight? So wherever they say stop, you'll just say this one right here. This is a, a, an important moment to separate these hands and um, ask them to make sure that it's this one. This is important for two reasons. It gives them the ability to switch, which they totally can do. And this is a little subtlety that will help us hide the sort of suspicious action that we'll be doing. So when we go through, we, they pick one, they say, all right, this one. This also, by the way, helps them visualize their card being at the end of the spread, which is important as you'll see in a minute. So the first bit of deception we need to do is we need to square their card to the next card in the spread, okay? So we just need to push it so that they are squared up along the edges and along the tops. Now, if you spread evenly, they should already be square along the top. So just a little push will make them square along all four sides. It doesn't need to be Perfect, perfect, but the more perfect, the better. And it should be nearly perfect for this. Now, how do we do the replacement? All right, again, don't bring your hands far apart, just a little bit of separation so they can clearly visualize their card as the end one. Now your fingers underneath are gonna slightly contact this card and your thumb is gonna be along the edge. And that's, that's how I square those cards up. Now, there's not much of a method to this, but this is just how I do it. Do whatever's comfortable, whatever's easy. But my bottom fingers contact their card and the thumb contact the edge. And then the fingers on the right hand slightly open up, slightly release so that I can slide that card quickly and easily uh, square with this card, okay? Now this is the moment that is a little bit fishy, right? And it has to be unnoticed. So the best way to keep that unnoticed is to do it quickly 
And to keep this, um, or to keep the amount that the cards are spread between each other very small. You can see each card is just a little bit over the other one, right? I'm not spreading super wide gaps so that when they pick one, I have to push it all the way to square, right? That obviously looks very fishy. So keep the spread very tight, especially when they're going in to pick a card. You want them to pick a card where the spread is tight, okay? So they pick this one, we square it, now what? Now we lift up the deck just as you would normal to show them their card. So in this control, obviously they can't take their card, they can't sign their card. So you have to keep that in mind when you're using it depending on the trick. Um, so this is just where they're looking at a card, they're remembering a card or what, what, whatever the case might be. So they have their card, you show them, right? You just bring the hand up, you show them. And this is actually the card they picked. This is totally a free choice. So this is the card they picked, but it just so happens that that card is, now, is a double because we pushed it together with the other one. So it's, it's totally uh, not noticeable, but it is actually a double. And how does that help us? Well, as we come back down, you see, it gives the illusion that their card is at the end of the spread, which technically it is, but now the second card in the spread is really above it at the end. So here it looks like it's at the end and when we bring it down, the card that appears like it's at the end isn't actually theirs because theirs is underneath, right? So now we bring it down and we'll bring the deck back and we're gonna pull their card off with the thumb. Now really, this isn't their card, this is the card that was one before it that we squared it up with, but it totally does look like their card. So you wanna pull it off um, pretty much perfectly on top of this deck. You don't wanna pull it up or to the side, not yet. I'll talk about how to kind of up jog that card to make it more convincing. But you wanna pull it off and at the same time we're doing the culling, which I talked about in the last video. And now we're using the right fingers underneath to pull that card until it clears the, the left hand packet so that we can slide it underneath. So let me talk about that a little bit more. After you show, you come back down and now we're in the perfect position to cull because the thumb has made contact with the card on top so we have that point of contact. As it's pulling over, these fingers underneath are pulling this way, culling their card so that it can clear that left hand packet, all right? Once it's cleared, you just kind of hold it underneath the spread and now you're free to do what you want with their card. But let's say for base, for the basic version, you leave their card there, they have their eye on their card the whole time, you drop the fingers to let that card fall down just a little bit, not much so that you flash, but just a little bit, you don't see it with the coverage of the spread. Then you push the deck closed and that pushes their card to the bottom of the deck while it appears that their card is going right into the middle. The convincer control uses a lot of the same principles as the spread force that we talked about in the last video, or one of the last videos. So um, if you're getting the hang of that, this should be even easier to do for sure. So I'll just quickly jump into the subtleties. There's two main ones that I wanna talk about. The first one is doing this part where you're bringing the hands back together after you've showed them. You wanna do it fairly quickly. Right? You, if you do this and then you come down and you do it slow and you come in and you pull and everything is very slow. First of all, it's suspicious, not natural, but more importantly, you lose that moment where they see their card here and then they see it there, right? Every second that you put in between when they actually see the face of their card and when you close that spread is another second for you to do something. So you want to do this at a good speed so that literally only a second, a few seconds after they've seen their card is it pushed into the middle, right? And that's part of what makes this control so strong is how quickly it can be done. Now, I don't want you to go like this and just go super quick, right? You want them to be able to see everything happening and see that everything is fair, but you can do it all at a good pace so that it keeps that kind of visual retention of them having seen their card and then instantly you're closing that spread with their card in the middle, but you've already controlled it to the bottom. Um, so it's important to do that quickly and especially this action when you come from here to here and pull. 
that should be one fluid quick motion. It just helps sell the fact that you're taking their card off the, 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 uh, the, the edge of the spread, right? It uh, just plants in their mind that, okay, this is my card. I know my card is the last card in the spread and now he's taking the last card of the spread. So they'll have no questions in their mind, even though you're controlling it. The other thing would be that out jog. So the out jog is a little bit more difficult, but I would recommend you do it. And this is how I always do it. So what you got to do for the out jog is when you come here, you come here and you pull that card. First, you want to pull it um, straight across and then you start to call. Once you've called to the point where, let's see if you can see, this is the, the call, their card that I'm calling right now. Once I've called it past basically the third card, right? It was it used to be out here and now I've pulled it. Once it gets past the next card in the spread, which you can see by the corner, it's already passed here, okay? Now, if I take this away, it's hidden. If it hadn't passed that third card and I took it away, you'd still see it. So once it gets past that third card, now I'm free to move this one, this card that they believe is theirs however I want, and the corner of that card won't flash at all, okay? So I'll do that again. I'll show you what it would look like if you did it wrong, okay? If you go from here and you don't call it enough, and you start to out jog, you'll see there's this corner that flashes um, underneath, and that's their card because it's it's still there. What you need to do, is go begin the call and then shift it up. And now it totally looks like, I mean, it, there was never, never a double there, which is the one discrepancy and that's how you cover it. So at regular pace, we spread, they pick one, we reveal it, we put it down, we up jog it, and now we're in this position. And this is a really strong position because the deck's been closed and, you, and the work has been done. You can put this, oops, you can put that down and allow them to square up the pack, push their own card in, which is a amazing subtlety um, that you should definitely use. I use that all the time, right? So after I go here and I've done the convincer control and I go with the up jog, and it's okay if it's a little messy like that. It doesn't have to be super clean. That just kind of adds to, you know, it being a natural thing. All right, so the work's been done. As you see, the king of hearts is already there. They think it's here, so you can even just do it in your hand and have them just tap that card in. Um, when it, and it'll already be at the bottom, right? So the work has been done before they even know that something has been done in this case, which, which is super awesome for this. It's a great subtlety to do that out jog. So there's two ways I'll just show you to get the up jog. I, I kind of skipped over that. But as you pull, you can either push the card up with the thumb, which will be a little bit more messy for sure. Or you just shift this whole hand forward, contact it with the thumb and bring this packet back. And now you have a nice up jog. The, the faster method just seems to be a little bit nicer because it keeps that fluidity and speed that I was talking about. So in terms of body language, you definitely want to be natural as with everything. Uh, you know, don't draw attention to the square up. That's the biggest thing, right? It's hiding this moment. And like I said, we need to hide that moment where we're squaring up that card because it's a weird thing. Why wouldn't we just show them? Why would we square up and then show them? So we need to make it seem like it's totally nothing. Again, if it's a very small gap to, to square up, then, you know, it doesn't seem like much. Whereas it's all the way out here and you go like this and then show them, it's weird. So keep that small. The second they say, yes, that's theirs. Literally, it's just like that and you're up, right? Kind of cover it by squaring it and bringing the hand up right away. And that'll basically help cover it because it'll just be like that, right? So that's a, a helpful technique, but definitely practice that. Get good at that when they say yes, you just square it and you bring the hand up. Don't bring any attention to it. The second they pick that card, we want to make it feel like we're showing them that card. So we say yes and we show them, okay? Really don't pull attention to that moment because it shouldn't bring attention. It's something really small that can be covered with speed and keeping that gap small and by you not looking at it, never look at your hands when you're doing a deception, right? And this is one of those moments. If you don't look at it, if you look at them, that will likely look back at you. Even if you have someone grilling your hands, not looking at your hands makes them feel that it doesn't matter as much, right? So in terms of other uses and ideas, I'll just talk about what to do if someone does happen to call you out on that square up, because believe it or not, this is one of the things that I actually used to get called out on quite a bit, right? 
it's not even the calling out the square, they just are get confused, right? What would happen was they'd say this one, I would square it and they say, no, I didn't say that one, I said the other one. I'm like, well, I was just squaring it. I'm still, like, I'm still showing you the same card, right? They just didn't realize that, yeah, I'm still showing them the same card. They thought that when I pushed it underneath that now I'm showing them the second card, but really I'm always showing them the one they picked, right? So if you ever get something like that, what I would say is just show them, go like, go here and just say, look, yeah, you know, separate the card a little bit. You don't want to show them that it's a double because they might, you know, figure something out that way. And so just slightly separate the card and say, no, look, see, I'm still going to show you this one and flash that, flash it like that a couple times. So they've already seen the card and then on one of your ways down, square it up and then bring it back and you say, all right, you're good. You got it. And now we're set up and we can go right back into the control. Um, of course you can offer after that moment when you've shown them that, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to cheat you. You can do it again with, and so they can pick a new card if you want. So here, right, you show them, they call you out after you do the square, you say, no, 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 I'm actually, I'm showing you this one. See, it's just the eight of clubs there, right? You got it, good. And then you're good, boom, and you completed the control once again. With controls like this, this is something I've been wanting to talk about. Um, I'll talk about it. This is you know, one of the first control videos that I'm doing. And this is a good control. Like this is a really good control. Let me show you what you don't want to do, right? If you go through and you have someone pick a card, two of diamonds, and you go and you do a very nice control, right? Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to just come and start doing this, you know? You don't want to start going and doing a bunch of false shuffles, okay? Regardless that their card is still at the bottom, you still know where it is. Think about what that does, okay? In their mind, you've just taken their card and put it as fairly as they can imagine into the middle of the deck. So they are 100% convinced that it's in the middle of the deck. Now, you go and you start shuffling the deck, right? And then their card ends up being on the bottom or the top or whatever it happens to be. So in their mind, all that you did was put their, really put their card into the middle and then somehow you knew the position and you just did a, a quick false shuffle to bring their card to where you needed it. So, and that really takes away from the, the magic and takes away from your skill, right? Because this control is so good, do not mix it with a false shuffle afterwards, right? Do the control and leave it. Put the deck down, you're done. This is the most powerful moment because they're 100% convinced their card is in the deck. If you start doing a bunch of things, shuffling the deck, well, that's obviously when you move the card, they're gonna think. That's when you brought the card to the top and then they won't be nearly as impressive because you put the card in the middle and then you shuffled and brought it to the top rather than you put the card in the middle and then somehow it appeared on top. I have no idea, right? You see what I'm trying to say? If you're doing very good controls, you don't need to false shuffle anymore. And that's why I don't really false shuffle anymore unless I'm doing full deck false shuffles for the trick. But I don't false shuffle for one card or whatever because I'm doing such good controls that it's way more fooling to not false shuffle, to just do the control. And then it's way more convincing that their card is in the deck, right? The only time there should be shuffling is if they're doing it, okay? So keep that in mind when you're doing this. All right, so that's it for this video. This is the convincer control. The best control that I've taught on this channel so far. So I uh, really encourage you to practice it, get good at it and start using it. You'll be amazed at how easily you can fool people. You know, don't use it as a trick. Like don't just do the convincer control and then be like, boom, your card's on the bottom. Um, you can do that to show off your skill if you want. I, I, I've done that before. Like. Just, hey, look at this really quick. This, or if someone wants a little bit of insight into kind of some of the things you do, you can, you don't have to give it away, but just show them like, oh, here's a quick sleight of hand move. Um, and it'll just floor people just because it's so good. And people will grill your hands, stare at you from this close and they won't be able to see it if you do it right. So go practice that. Um, more videos soon. I think the next video will be a trick video. I'll probably go over my handling on the Chicago opener. Pretty similar to the original, but I think it's a really great classic trick, so I just wanted to teach you that. And we have the tools to 
perform that, so it looks great. But with that said, don't forget to like, please subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.